one of the most dedicated peace activists that many of us have ever met. Um, and so we will, uh, we'll have a song, um, we'll have remembrances from some of Tom's family, and then we'll invite your remembrances, and then we will go together and spread Tom's ashes over by the stupa. There's a canoe cedar there, a very beautiful tree that is growing, uh, fertilized and, and nourished by the ashes of some of our dearest people here. So it's a great privilege to have Tom join that cloud of witnesses. So uh, let's begin by singing, um, I'm gonna lay down my sword down by the riverside down by the riverside down by the riverside gonna lay down my sword and shield down by First of all, I just want to thank everybody for coming. Um, many thanks to Ann Hall for what she's done for this. Leonard, for your efforts. And the Ground Zero Center for, or Ground Zero Center for Nonviolent Action. Um, this is a place where Tom spent a lot of time. He spent a lot of time here. And it was all toward guided um, process of peace. World peace, local peace. And he chose to do it not about half a mile from nuclear submarine base, which he was in the inside that fence a bunch of times getting arrested. He was inside the fence protesting. He was inside that fence carrying banners. So when I was coming on the ferry today, I thought, I got some big shoes to fill. And those shoes belong to Tom Shea, who's my stepdad. And those shoes made a lot of steps right here. A lot of steps here. Tom dedicated his life to peace. He did it when he was young. He did it you know, his adolescence and continued the process from Traverse City, Michigan. Chapter 50, Veterans of Peace. And Chapter 90, Veterans of Peace, Seattle. And of course, the Ground Zero Nonviolent Center. So, and he was relentless. He was dedicated. And he had peace in his heart. He had peace in his soul. I can't think of anybody that I grew to know more than anything that, that um, anybody more committed to the cause, you know. And that cause is, is elimination of nuclear weapons. And that cause is world peace. Back in 2014, Tom planted a, non, a Veterans of Peace seed inside me. We sat on and talked, he passed me his folder. And I took that seed and I grew that seed and that seed flourished. From initially joining Veterans of Peace, Chapter 13 in Tucson, as a regular member. 
and then BN, outreach coordinator for the chapter. And then recently being elected vice president. I remember I called Tom when I got elected vice president and he was so happy on the phone. So happy to learn I'd done that. So um, he, passed it, he passed the torch to me. You know, I'm gonna take that torch and I'm gonna flourish with that torch. That torch is gonna burn forever until I die. There's so many awesome words I could say about Tom. Uh, I mean, I can't say a bad word about Tom, I can't. And there's one word that describes his whole personality and his being, and that is awesome. Awesome. He was a gentle man, Tom was. Gentle, passionate, caring, forgiving. And most of all, love. Everybody he knew, everybody he talked to, everybody he joined the Veterans of Peace, everybody who grew friends with him, he cared about deeply. And he never wavered from that, that love and care. And I gotta say one thing with Tom. I'll be forever grateful to have known him, to have him in my life. He made a huge difference in what I do now. When I retired in 99, Tom convinced me to, to lay down my arms and join the peace mission, and I did. And I love it, I really do. But you know, I'm gonna love Tom forever and ever and ever. And he, I have a great big hole right here in my heart. Good time. And I think he knows it. He's shining down on us right now. This is a beautiful day. His presence is all around us, you know. And his presence will continue to be here, right here. And that's why I'm so ever grateful for to have him uh, in my presence. So, um, on behalf of my stepmom, Darlene Shea, she sends her. Um, gratitude. She sends her love over here. And of course, when she, got, when she couldn't come, I said, I'll just go ahead and tell everybody that you guys are awesome for her. So, and with that, I'll just say thank you. Thank you for um, having time in your lives. Amen. Amen. <laughs> First of all, would you please silence all cell phones and other noise-making devices there? Uh, I'm not pointing at anyone in particular, Charlie. But, um, I tell a friend of mine when I had them I'm inside my butt. Except so. you. You don't have to silence yours, William. Wow. Thank you all for being here today. This is just... Ah, it's a beautiful day. It's a, I haven't been to Ground Zero Center for a long time, and it's, it's good to be here with all of you. And, and I know Tom is here with us. And tell <laughs> yeah. us who you are. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Leonard Iger. Um, Ground Zero member and uh, friend and uh, tr co troublemaker with Tom Shea. <laughs> and I'll just tell you a brief story to introduce this. Um, I moved to the Snoqualmie Valley uh, 26 years ago. And uh, first thing I did was start a social justice ministry in the United Methodist Church there in the valley. And not too many years after that, I got a phone call. And it was from a gentleman named Tom Shea. So it turns out, Tom and Darlene, his lovely wife and, uh, and co-conspirator, Darlene Shea, because we're talking about Tom Shea today, but he and Darlene were inseparable co-conspirators. <laughs> and I'll say more about that in a moment. But he called, uh, they arrived in the Snoqualmie Valley. They settled out here to be closer to their beautiful family. And uh, Tom called the Snoqualmie United Methodist Church, and he talked to the person in the office there and said, hey, you know, who's the social justice person, or who's doing social justice work in the Valley? And Becky Salito, the secretary, said, oh, you have to talk to Leonard. Tom calls me, and we have this nice conversation, and all of a sudden, I'm like, wait a minute, you know Sister Jackie Hudson and Carol and all Wait, you know, and we're going back and forth about people we know and we've worked with, uh, other co-conspirators and peacemaking around the country. 
and I immediately realized I found a kindred spirit. And it was downhill from there. <laughs> it was just, I made the 15 minute trip from my house in North Bend to Snoqualmie so many times, just down the street from your house there and uh, sat with uh, Tom and Darlene. We'd have a cup of tea and we'd talk strategy or we'd talk about one of Tom's wild street theater um, scripts that we performed here many times at Ground Zero. I see many actors and actresses here uh, <laughs> that are starred in some of those bits of theater. And um, Tom was an extraordinary spirit. And I don't need, you've read the obituary, you've read the stories about, uh, you know, his being a recovering Jesuit and, and everything else. But he was such an extraordinarily strong spirit. Uh, you know, everything he did, he, he did with passion. And I do have to say, again, Darlene was always there to not rein him in in any way, but to edit things down. He and I both could be, and I still am, very wordy. And so Darlene was always there to keep us honest and make things really work. And that was the beauty of it. We would sit together for an hour or two some days, and it was such a gift to be able to sit in their peaceful, quiet home and, and work on strategy. But Tom was always about the work. And, the, and strategy, and peacemaking, and building a better world for future generations, our children, our grandchildren, you know, the future that we hold in trust. And, you know, that was the beauty of it. Tom never stopped. And I understand that right to the end that he even tried to get Stephen, Darlene's son Stephen, to do tax resistance. I, as I heard the story I, the week before he passed away. You know, he, he was always thinking and always doing, and that was the beauty of it. He walked the walk. He walked in beauty, he really did. And I just want to say one last thing is that I learned so much from the both of them together, not just Tom, but Tom and Darlene together, um, because, you know, they came together, you know, through chance back in, back in Michigan there, and that's another long story and another beautiful story, but, but they were meant to be together, I could tell. Because when we would sit and talk and the way we worked things through things and came up with ideas, they were such a team. And I learned from both of them. And I took so much away. And, you know, Tom lives in me as he lives in each of us who was touched by him, whether it's his children and and grandchildren or members of Ground Zero and members of Veterans for Peace and everyone he touched. Uh, he left a bit of a piece of himself with us and I will always carry that with me and uh, it will inform my work and my spirit in the world and as I know it touches each of you. So that's all I wanted to share today. Thank, I thank you. you for the opportunity. Thank you. And Leonard is filming today for Darlene, so she can be here too. Are you? Actually, uh, yes, I am. I am channeling through Stephen here, who is okay. is, is filming. So we are. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're channeling through somebody. You know, and he's yeah. and Perfect. he's doing a special stop motion filming. Go, that's that's right. good. Right. Don't let, let me do it. I was just, you know. I'm Nathan. Um, Tom was my grandfather. I'm a public school teacher in Seattle Public Schools, and one way that I connected with Tom was that when he was a Jesuit, he also was a teacher and he developed an alternative school. And he spent, for my entire life, I know him as a teacher. So he's the person that got me interested in nonviolent action and resistance to, to um, violence and um, recommended good books. Um, Howard Zinn was on the list, I'm sure. Um, and Tom was somebody that he would listen, but somehow he'd always leave you with something. He was always teaching you, even though you felt like you were the person talking. <laughs> and he had this wonderful way to turn ideas toward valuing human beings and valuing what's right in people. And he would do that often through stories. He had so many amazing stories that I'm sure Leonard is a keeper of many, should be told and not told. <laughs> and um, he, he, one thing that really captured my imagination growing up was that during the Infatata and after he was a nonviolent observer in Palestine 
and for me that was a huge point of interest and so I connected with him on that. I was a paperboy at the time and through my whole paperboy career it was during conflict with Israel and Palestinians and um, it was his stories about how to value people and what's right that really connected with me and that's something that has stayed with our family and been passed on to me as a teacher. I teach about, um, about human rights We'll be learning about the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in my fifth grade class this fall. I think about Tom when I teach that. When I teach about Martin Luther King Jr., I think about Tom organizing outside of Cleveland when Dr. Kim came and said we need to participate in the Great Boycott. I teach about that too. Um, and so Tom's legacy in terms of his life's work is really connected to this space. And one memory that I'll always cherish with him is he lived in Traverse City for a long time. And up here's a little story of his soapbox. But he would also organize on this weekend a luminaries float down the Traverse City River mm -hmm. to commemorate and remember the tragedies at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I participated with him many times. Um, and so this place, this weekend, is something that I think is really appropriate to Tom's memory in this work. And um, his legacy will live on in, in, in the hearts that he's changed, in people that probably don't know he changed them. Are there others who would like to share memories of Tom? You don't, you don't need to stand up here if you want to just stand where you are. Yes, Glenn. Yeah, um, Want to come as far a little as that, closer? <laughs> Maybe you should come up here so everyone doesn't have to turn around. I can't remember when. It, my name is Glenn Milner. I'm with Ground Zero. I can't remember when I first met Tom. I remember it felt like a natural event. You know, it felt normal to be with him. Um, always felt good. He was, he was just kind of appeared in our, in our lives and he was there, you know, and it's always good working with him. Um, I guess as far as the war tax resistance, you know, he was pretty well known, I think. Uh, the the uh, National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee, you know, had an, an article about Tom um, in it. And when they knew uh, that we were having this event today for Tom, um, they sent uh, one person, there's two of them actually, that sent something. I'll, it's, it's not really long, so I'll, I'll just go ahead and read the whole thing, I guess. Uh, from Lincoln Rice, who's the uh, National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee coordinator in Wisconsin. Said, Tom Shea dedicated his life to peacemaking and saw war tax resistance as a logical facet for the peacemaker in the United States. Tom was a tireless supporter of war tax resistance in Nutrig, National War Tax Resistance Coordinating Committee, he advocated the practice war tax resistance among those groups with which he was involved, like the uh, Fellowship Reconciliation, Ground Zero, every, every tax day, and this was always, he always saw this, right? Tom could be found outside his local post office handing out war tax resistance literature, and he was always willing to counsel anyone who had questions about incorporating war tax resistance into their own life, as you know. Um, you could say that Tom walked the talk, Tom led a life authentically dedicated to peacemaking, and he will be missed. I, I feel that way. I feel, like I say, a very natural, very fine person. Uh, Ruth uh, Ben, who's with the war tax resistance forever, I mean, she's like the person nationally known. She was a coordinator from 2003 to 2015. Uh, Ruth wrote, Tom was a longtime contact and supporter of National War Tax Resistance from his days in Michigan on. We much appreciate his bringing the issue to folks at Ground Zero and whatever, wherever he lived through his writings and distributing literature. He had literature. <laughs> so I think. Uh, you know, he, he always had stuff with him. <laughs> like his display at a Ground Zero program on Martin Luther King Day in 2014, he was someone we could count on to bring war tax resistance into the conversation 
of war resistance, someone who stuck with it for the long haul. And that's from Ruth Ben. Anyway, I'm very happy to have known Tom. Um, I remember like, probably like one of the last times he went to our house. He was pretty old, you know, <laughs> and you know, he just kept going. I mean, as long as he, if he was able, he was going to keep going. And we watched him leave our house, go across the street, get in his car, and it took him some time to get there. But he was, anyway, he, he was there, he was with it. Um, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Yes, Bernie. I just have a little bit to share about Tom. Um, in the 50s, I was in Cleveland, Ohio, where I grew up, and I went to Ignatius High School, a Jesuit high school in Cleveland, and Tom was a, a teacher, a prop, as a scholastic before he became a, a, a priest in the Jesuits. And so I never had an opportunity to go to his classes because I was in other classes for some reason. But I felt his presence. And um, later on, I became a priest in Cleveland. And Dan Berrigan, another Jesuit, had a huge influence on me. I checked it up and, and got involved with the actions against the Vietnam War at that time. In 78, I moved out here and became active in supporting and participating in Ground Zero. And I was very happy when Tom showed up. <laughs> and, and you know, I felt like, wow, I got somebody from Cleveland <laughs> and a Jesuit to be part of. So I, I knew him from involvement here. And uh, one comedy thing, I wouldn't, uh, Glenn mentioned war tax resistance. In recent years, I had no need to resist because I didn't pay taxes. But one year I had income and I thought I had to pay taxes. So I submitted a form resisting, you know. I thought resisting, but what do you know? I did something wrong with my forms and they gave me a, a refund. <laughs> and I told Tom that through a, through a notice, a letter, and he said he and Darlene got a real kick out of that. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. But he was full of stuff, like, that, like everybody says. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Anyone else? Uh, Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Murray. I'm the member in residence here at Ground Zero. I've lived here on the premises since 2014. Um, I feel cheated that I didn't get to know Tom better in person. Um, at some point, while I was when I was initially here, I either gave a talk or wrote something um, that Tom liked because I got in the mail a very beautiful handwritten thank you and with lots of praise and encouragement for whatever it was that I said or wrote. I can't remember what it was, but shortly after that letter came a, a complimentary notice that I have a, a year subscription to Yes Magazine courtesy of Tom Shane. <laughs> and, that, and that continued year after year. And then oh, wow. also, um, since, since I'm the only one here, I don't know, I want everyone here from Ground Zero to know that Tom, even after he wrote to us saying that because of his physical situation, he didn't feel that he could join us at the future actions and such, such you know, he stopped coming as he got older but he would send me many, many, many packets of handwritten notes and replete with war tax literature <laughs> and ideas of how to present this at Ground Zero Stu Stewardship Council meetings and ideas of how to incorporate war tax resistance um, into our, our annual actions. And he would send lots of handouts and things like that. Um, and I just, I want everybody to know that long after Tom stopped coming here physically, he was writing notes and encouraging and thinking and as you all pointed out um, and I'll always remember that because as a relative newcomer to Ground Zero I really appreciated the encouragement that he was giving me a uh, long distance and he definitely touched my life and I feel like as a legacy um, maybe we should here at Ground Zero um, make available literature for war tax resistance from here on out um, 
you know, all the time. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. <laughs> William, you had something from Yeah, Jerry I have a couple things. You know, we'll get on my soapbox this time for don't, on don't break box. it. You know, on his soapbox. <laughs> that doesn't feel right. <laughs> so this is a couple of quotes that I, I got from, first one's from Jerry Conan, who's the national VP president. He wrote, Helen and I are, are there with you in spirit. We admire Tom Shea greatly. We had the pleasure of working with Tom in Greater Seattle, Venice and Peace. Right now we're in Hilo, Hawaii with the Golden Rule Anti-Nuclear Sailboat. Also with Tom Rogers, who sailed up in San Diego on his three-week passage to Hawaii. Tom Shea would be happy and proud. Please express our condolences and solidarity to all. And the other one comes from Felice and Jack Copa, who's our, um, I'm a member of Blue Peel Resistors. And they write, I'm so glad you're there, Pete. I'm thinking of all gathered at Ground Zero at Center for Nonviolent Action. Today, remember Tom, peace and love to you all. And those are two very uh, great responses to my Facebook posts. So. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to get on the soapbox now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Others. Leonard? One brief thing, uh, if, if, if it was obituary, someone might have noticed that Tom's birthday was August 6th, which was rather notable that, that our good friend and, and Tom Shea was born on that particular day, and so there was some confluence of uh, events that occurred to make that happen. and. Uh, it always has stuck with me, and I'll, I'll always remember the day, if not for everything else, but that that is the day that my good friend Tom was born and came into this world. And it's something I'll remember. Thank you. Anyone else? All right, then, let us go together um, over to the stupa and the uh, canoe cedar. And that's where we will spread Tom's ashes. Why don't you hold your hand since you're going to be the one? Yeah, I'm going to prepare it for everyone. There you go. Okay. So you can jump and you can get everyone with a little piece. And, yeah. and did you want to uh, start with something first before we do this? Yes, I was, was going to start with the traditional words. Hmm. In sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to, all God, to Almighty God our brother Tom, and we commit his ashes to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. May God bless him and keep him. May God's face shine on him and be gracious to him. May God look upon him with favor and give him peace. Amen. I feel like everybody just um, take a little bit of time and put him um, in the tree so he can grow and flourish from this point on. And, you know, he uh, will definitely grow and flourish. This is, um, we're continuing time. We're continuing time through the trees. We're continuing time through nature. And we're continuing time through peace. So. Everybody can come over and grab a little piece and we'll start. Right.
I'm having a big one. Somebody wants to go all the time, right? Mommy, can I go and help right here? Mm -hmm. much. Anybody else? Or is some of it going somewhere else? Um, it was all supposed to be Freddy, as far as oh, I know. I can't find it.
Tom's here, we're so blessed to have Tom so much with us. Sing a song of peace. The words are, peace is flowing like a river, flowing out from you and me, flowing out into the desert, setting all the captives free. So it's, peace is flowing like a river, flowing out, flowing out. into the desert. Flowing out into the desert. Setting all the captives free. Setting all the captives free. Hope. Hope is flowing like a river. Flowing out you and me. I just like everybody to, for a few moments. I want you to just, um, there's a couple things we do in the peace culture. It's either shake it up or clap. But I think Tom Shea deserves a clap this afternoon. Mm -hmm. So I want everybody to put their hands together. And let's clap for Tom Shea. Yeah. And let's send this up to heaven. And I want Tom to hear it. So <laughs> please, do your best. for you. Yeah. That's it. That's it. Don't forget well we have done. a great concert coming up tonight. Hank and Flair will be here yeah. 7 o'clock. Song yeah, of Resistance and Hope. Why? Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that's what Darlene wants. Yeah, yeah, I go back and give her a good report. Yeah. You know, she, she was so worried about uh, how this is all going to go. So, yeah. Oh, we got this. We got this. And thank you, Ann. Yeah, Thank you.